Fala, meus lindos. Tudo bem com vocês? Como é que vocês estão? Galera, tô com um começo de resfriado aqui. É, tá muito frio por aqui, cara. Não sei aí onde vocês estão aí, mas aqui o bagulho tá osso. Tô até um pouco rouco, né? Mas isso não vai nos impedir de fazer conteúdo. E seguinte, esses dias atrás nós fizemos um vídeo, né? Aprendendo um pouco sobre Black Myth e o Kong. Ou melhor, sobre The Journey to the West. O mito, né? A história que inspira Black Me e Phil Kong. E nós vimos nesse canal aqui da Avenue X, ela comentou bastante coisa, aprendemos bastante coisa, e vocês disseram pra mim, pô, Calil, faz um outro react, tem um outro vídeo dela onde ela explica um pouquinho mais sobre, aqui já tá até falando, né, a arquitetura, a cultura, as referências que apareceram em alguns, né, dos, dos vídeos do jogo e tal. E eu tô bem curioso, quero ver junto de vocês, espero que vocês gostem também. Se aprendemos muito no último, eu acredito que alguma coisa a gente vai conseguir absorver aqui também. O vídeo tem 30 minutos, então já saiba que você vai ficar 30 minutos aqui comigo. Pelo menos é isso que eu espero, né? Mas antes de começar, deixa eu te avisar. Ontem à noite, 10 horas da noite, na verdade, eu soltei um vídeo, pessoal, falando sobre as minhas primeiras impressões de um jogão da Capcom que tá pra chegar agora, no dia 19 do próximo mês, que é o Dead Rising Deluxe. Remaster, ia falar remake, remaster. Deem uma olhada, eu vou deixar no cardzinho final e no primeiro link aqui do comentário fixado para que você possa ver. Dá uma ajuda pra gente nesse vídeo e espero que vocês gostem, porque foi feito com muito amor. Já clica aqui no primeiro link aqui de baixo, tá? Já deixa separado ali para você assistir terminando esse vídeo, tá bom? Então vamos lá. Ah, o vídeo dela aqui eu vou deixar na descrição também. Hello. If this is the second time you've seen me on YouTube, well, that means you are an avid game player. Roughly around the same time last year, I made a video on Black Myth Wu Kong's first game playing trailer video this year. The second game playing video has just been released. Initially, I wasn't really thinking about making another video, but I've seen my regular drama review viewers telling me that they have seen on the internet people were wondering where was that Chinese lady? <laughs> so. This is that video. A couple of things before I start to talk about this newly released game playing video. First, I am not a game player in any sense. The only game I play, which I actually haven't played for over a year, is Sims. And I only like the part where I build a house for the people. I don't even bother to have people living in them. This video will contain no comment on the actual game playing experience that is left to the professional game YouTubers to do. The second is this game playing video actually contains a lot of details. Refer to the original novel Journey to the West, Xiu Ji. Refer to the very famous 1980s television series. Also referring to Chinese history or... Ah, e deixa eu comentar já com vocês. Galera, eu tô assistindo... <laughs> E adorando o Journey to the West lá de 1986, o ano que eu nasci, né? É a, a série mais famosa, né? E antiga, até onde eu sei, de Journey to the West, contando a história de Sun Wukong. E embora seja bem datadinho, eu tô adorando. Ela tem inteira no YouTube, ela tá em inglês, mas dá pra você colocar a legenda em português, como eu tô fazendo aqui, ó. Depois eu vou mostrar pra vocês, tá? Bora lá. Architecture, religion, everything. So, I Super subjectively indico. picked out the things that I think might be interesting to international viewers, Câmera. and I will have it time coded so that it's easier for you to find topics I'm talking about throughout. Also, the stuff that I'm gonna talk about come from my own research plus me watching other people making analysis videos. If they say something, I go double check and see if that's true and then I put it in this video. So I'll link some of the Billy Billy Chinese content creators videos that I've looked at and used as a reference for my own video, but they're all in Chinese and without English subtitle. This time I'm not gonna wrong the trailer as I talk about it. I'll just tell you the time code and then with the screenshot so that you can go and check out that particular part. Right from the beginning, of this video, you hear a narrator's voice. At the end of the video, you kind of have an idea about who this person would be. This person is addressing the group of the characters that are the central characters of Xiu Ji Journey to the West. You want this 
You want that, you want that, but you are all gonna fail. This copy is probably written specifically just for this video. I doubt it will come out of the game exactly like that. But the people that he is referring to are the four two-legged characters in this core group. First is Tang Seng, the Tang Monk. Within Journey to the West IP, not really such a lovable character. Then another monk who is really a river god slash demon, however you want to categorize him. Not a good person to start with, but eventually turned good and decided to become a disciple of the monk, protect him and help him on his way to the West, although he is pretty much useless. Then it is addressing the monkey. The core character of Journey to the West also kind of the core character of Black Myth Wukong, but then the Black Myth Wukong probably isn't the original Wukong. We will have to wait till the game comes out to know exactly who that is. And then it is the pig who um, yeah, likes to eat. And that's probably the only thing he likes, plus pretty girls. And it totally excluded the horse. Often people just forget it's Yo, actually dragon. five people's team and the horse is actually a dragon who is actually a um, prince principe. and he only takes the horse's form because the monk needs a ride. Nobody cares about the horse. I'm very sad about that. Around time code 18 second, you see a shot of quite incredible carvings. This is taken from real site in China. Depois eu vou mostrar esse. Eu acho que todo mundo a essa altura já viu, porque esse trailer que ela está se referenciando é o trailer de 2001, né? Um ano depois que o jogo foi anunciado. Lembra que eles ficavam só naquela de um trailer por ano? Então, esse aqui foi o segundo trailer. Depois eu vou mostrar o trailer, caso vocês não tenham visto, eu vou mostrar o trailer por inteiro, tá? Para vocês entenderem. Bora lá. Cool. Rock carving a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is located in the place Dazu, which is from the city Chongqing, which is also my hometown. One of the most uh, interesting cities, topographically speaking, in the world. So if you ever want to travel to China, I highly recommend you travel to my hometown, Chongqing. Pick one day out of your schedule, join a local tour package, which will just take one day, get on the bus, travel to Dazu, go see this incredible site. The carvings were made between the 9th and 13th que century. Louco. Throughout those hundreds of years, people kept on adding stuff, so it eventually become what it looks like today. Around 34 seconds, you'll see a low angle shot, slowly tracking towards a stone fence that seems to be outside of a building that looks like the edge of a temple. In the middle are three bigger figures, on the side are two smaller figures, and they are deities or gods from Taoism, Fu Lu Shou, representing good luck, good fortune, and longevity. Boa. So from that, <clears throat> we can tell that shot is taking place in a Taoism temple. Around second 53, you'll see a quite interesting statue that looks like it's on the top of a roof of a building. And it is the center statue that sits on the beam of the roof of a temple. It is filled with details and it's kind of suggesting black myth is black myth because it has twisted stuff that is not really following the canon. You'll see at the bottom there are three turtle-like animals. They all have Buddha head on their back. The middle one is particularly big. And standing on top of that big turtle is a fat-bellied monk. First, the turtle. It is a mythological animal called Ba Xia, or many other names. It's an auspicious mythological creature. And often, it functions as something that holds an important stone tablet, often sits on its back in temples or in other type of ancient important architecture. This rung-bellied monk is a Chinese version of the Bodhisattva slash Buddha. Maitreya. In Buddhism, it is considered that our current world is still under the time of current Buddha, which is the Buddha who lived around 2,500 years ago in ancient India. Although it's been 2,500 years, we're still within his teaching time frame. And then in the future, when the teaching time of our current Buddha runs out, a new Buddha would come, and that will be the future Buddha. That will be the Maitreya Buddha. That will be in Chinese. So this Buddha is currently technically still a bodhisattva who is just one step away from 
full total enlightenment, but because he has already being recognized by our current Buddha as the future comer. So people would call him both a Bodhisattva and a Buddha. The classic Maitreya Buddha looks like all the other Buddhas, but in China, Milafo often takes the shape of this fat belly, mm. laughing, happy monk. Reason being, there was a very famous monk during Wu Dai period who is a very fat monk with big belly, always smiling. He holds a huge sack on his shoulder all the time and he was later remembered as Bu Dai He Shang, the sack monk. And he is also recognized or agreed upon later by Buddhism community as the actual incarnation of Maitreya Buddha or Bodhisattva. So in Chinese Buddhism, the big bellied version is the better known and more <laughs> beloved. É cada coisa que a gente aprende, né, cara? Nunca nem imaginei, velho. Que é por isso que, que tem né, a representação do Buda, gordão, sorrindo. Olha aí, cara, isso vem de muito tempo de uma suposta reencarnação né, do Buda, no qual as pessoas acreditavam e tal. Olha aí. But one, if you go to a Buddhist temple, usually this Buddha statue will show up in the last building because he is the future one. The reason no I say it's very creepy and not really the uh, canon design of this type of statue is you will not see Buddha's head on the turtle back really like that in a proper temple. So this is showing this is not a normal temple. This is not the good temple. At the time mark minute one, you will see a shot from <clears throat> inside of a temple of a grand golden many hands Buddha statue. Qian Shou Guan Yin, thousand hands Guan Yin, the most popular Bodhisattva in Chinese culture. It is 100% totally taken from the real statue. And it is also located at Da Zhu rock carving site. Another reason for you to go and visit and see it in its magnificence. Around the time code, 1 minute and 20 seconds, the narrator is still talking and he's saying, if you cannot put down your obsession, you are bound to fail. But the Chinese line actually means if you cannot put down your idol. So I think that's just a translation decision. But the interesting thing is, as those lines are spoken, you see the camera pan across a group of statues and they're totally 100% based on real things. There is a temple called Yu Huang Miao, Jade Emperor Temple. So from the name you can tell, it is a Taoism temple located in the province Shanxi in the city Jincheng. And the statues you see in this video are taken from the real clay statues within that temple. They were all made in Yuan Dynasty verdade. and managed to be kept until today. Look at the photos of the real statue and the game. It's almost 100% copy. Not <laughs> sure go. how they did it, whether they just used the photo and then recreated it 3D somehow, or whether they actually went there to 3D scan the actual statue. I can't tell, I'm not an expert in that, but I'm super impressed by it. And those statues are 28 in total number, although in the video you only see a couple of them, and they are the 28 constellations in traditional Chinese astrology and also in mythology. The ecliptic of Earth is divided in four directions and four quadrants, north, south, east, west, and each section of the ecliptic in the sky has seven constellations, so multiplied by 4, 28 in total. And in the story of Journey to the West and also in mythology, each of those constellations is represented by a god or a deity. And the fact is they're not very high ranking gods in the Taoism heavens structure. They do the dirty work but don't get really recognition. And you see our main character, the monkey, transformed from a statue within that temple, which is one of the mm. monkey's superpowers. Very and dangerous. he walks into another kind of courtyard of a temple and see a huge statue. It is also one of the 28 statues from that real temple. This is the statue of the deity Kang Jinglong, which belongs to the east section of the ecliptic. And this is a very important row that we'll come across later. Around minute 2, 10 seconds, our main character walks into this snow field with frozen zombies and you hear a music instrument playing the very classic, very representative, very important Chinese ancient instrument, Qin, the seven string music instrument. That looks like this. Que lindo, velho. 
If you're interested to que find lindo, out more about it, I do have a couple of videos on my channel talking about Qin. Just type in Q I N in the search and you'll find them. Minute two, 28 second, we see a really big monkey on the roof. This monkey is probably the game's design of a type of monkey that exists in the story of Journey to the West called Chi Kao Ma Ho, literally means red buttocks, giant monkey. <laughs> And he's wearing red pants in the gameplay, so I'm just guessing naked butt that's red <laughs> is not really um, censorship friendly. Because of that red pants, people decided and feel that it must be that character. In the novel Journey to the West, it's been mentioned that there are four types of unusual, special monkey or apes that do not belong to any other categories of um, primates, and they each have very strong but different powers. The first one being the stone monkey, which is Sun Wukong, who was born out of a stone. The second one is this one, Chi Kao Ma Ho, also very powerful monkey. The third one being Tong Bi Yuan, which is long-armed ape. And then the fourth one being Liu Ar Mi Ho, six ears monkey, which is one of the major, major characters então vai in Journey to the West, who can copy Sun Kong exactly and it's almost impossible to tell the difference. Olha aí. Then we see a battle display of these two characters fighting in snow. I just have to say the snow texture is so good. When I saw the human movement, even the stick going through the snow, I was very very impressed about how realistic it looks. During this battle, you'll see a new skill that you haven't seen before in the first trailer of our main character. He drew a circle that's like fire around him and it protects him. One of Sun Wukong's trick in the book and also in the television series in the 80s, often when he has to go away to do something, he will use this magic, draw a circle around him and say, Shifu, just stay in this circle and nobody can harm you. No one can get in. You'll be 100% safe guaranteed if you don't get out. And you know what happens, right, with this type of plot. Usually when he leaves, something will happen to make the monk step out of the circle and get grabbed by all kinds of monsters and demons and the monkey has to go and save his shifu again. As Game Science has promised, they will use reference to the original IP, the novel, all the skills, all the weapons from the book. Now you see. Olha aí, né, cara? É aquilo que eu sempre falo. É bom a gente ir atrás dos materiais. Dá pra jogar, talvez, o game sem saber nada? Talvez sim, entendeu? Sem problema nenhum. Mas olha que interessante, né? Eu tô aprendendo ultimamente muitas coisas que eu nem fazia ideia, que eu via nos trailers, mas pra mim era só mecânica de gameplay. Mas não, tem lore. Tá dentro da história do Journey to the West. Como eu falei, eu tô assistindo a, a série de 86... Tem uma que é mais nova, quero assistir também. Tem os filmes. Tô indo atrás de tudo. Só não tô lendo o livro mesmo porque é gigante, tá ligado? Mas tô indo atrás de todos, pelo menos os conteúdos audiovisuais, pra gente poder ver. Ah, e deixa eu já comentar uma coisa com vocês. É... Alguns de vocês comentaram comigo que tem uma série de vídeos contando a história Journey to the West, do jeito que essa mina aqui tá fazendo, mas é uma brasileira, e ela tá falando o nosso idioma e tal, eu acho que são uns nove vídeos, não sei. Mano, não dá pra reagir a esses nove vídeos, mas se vocês quiserem vir, dá pra gente abrir uma live, tipo, vamos aprender, vamos entender a história, vamos conhecer a história e tal, e aí a gente assiste os nove na live, mano, pega uma pipoca, senta aqui... Eu vou assistindo, vocês vão assistindo, a gente vai pausando, conversando e tal. É dessa youtuber, né? Eu acho que é Sam, Jan, Sam, não me lembro. Mas vocês me indicaram ela. Se vocês quiserem, a gente abre uma live só pra poder acompanhar toda a história. Os nove vídeos dela lá, a gente ouve ela contando. Vocês topam? Comenta aí. Já aproveita que tá nesse momento do vídeo, pausa, vai lá, comenta. Calil, bora fazer ou não? E aí a gente vê, tá bom? E perdoem novamente minha voz, porque tá zoada mesmo, mano. Nossa, eu tô muito zoado. Vamos lá. Então, o que eu tava falando, né? Muito legal, porque eu não vi ainda na série que eu tô assistindo esse lance do círculo que ela falou, mas ela falou, tá lá, né? Agora, quando acontecer, eu já vou lembrar que é o mesmo círculo que faz no jogo. Isso é legal. One of its iteration. 
very exciting. After this fight, you see a bird with a human head flies in. The lines that this character speaks doesn't really have English subtitle, but basically he's kind of mocking at our main character and saying, you may have skills, but you are unfortunate or you don't have the fate to get what you want. You should just give up or basically just stay here, but you're here. You must be like all the previous people who came here. You are all looking for that thing. We do not know what that thing is. It's kind of a hook and you'll have to play the game to find out what that thing is. Then you hear the bird say, 小西天土地, calling himself. 小西天 is little west heaven, which is not west heaven. And we'll talk about that later. It has a lot to do with one of the plot in the book. 土地 is earth. It is the type of localized little deities who's in charge of an area of land. You see a potato version of this type of local small gods in the first trailer. And this is a different type that has wings. And it may ah, be based on a outro. couple of mysterious <clears throat> creatures in Chinese mystery. Mythology, but there are different types that have human head and bird wings, so I'm not sure which one it's based on, or maybe it's just the concept that's being used. And you see our main character turns into a bat and follows this local god and got led to frozen ice lake and epic review of a white dragon. I think for most game reviewers, when they saw that white dragon, that was the most exciting part for them. And I would agree, it looks epic. First, let's talk about dragon, and then this particular dragon, who most people in China believe this dragon. É o dragão Chinese que dragon virou. is different from Western dragons. In the West, you see dragons mostly as evil creatures, <coughs> um, having bat-like wings and breathe fire. Whereas Chinese dragons, they're more like the water side of magic animals, and they don't have wings. There's only one type that has wings, but it's not bat wings. It is actually a mixture of multiple animals. Supposedly, a dragon would have the head of a camel, the antlers of a deer, the eyes of a rabbit, the ears of a cow, a neck looks like a snake, que and loucura, its belly é looks like <laughs> clam, and its scale looks like carps, and it has egos, claws, and it has palms of tiger. Yeah. Taking Caraca, the cool mano. part of different animals and Verdade. almost Frankenstein it into one mythological creature. When that wings mano. dragon is able to fly, dragons are also associated with weather. And often you see in folklore and mythology, they have the ability to control rainfall or thunderstorm. Throughout the thousands of years of Chinese history, dragon gradually morphed its shape and style until what we see today. It wasn't until Yuan Dynasty that dragons have been decided in its final type of shape and look and its association with emperor. After that, only the emperor himself or the princes <coughs> who are emperor's sons can wear a dragon on their body. And the way to distinguish what type of dragon it is, is about how the head is positioned and also how many fingers they have on their claws. The five fingers are reserved for the emperor and the princess. And the four finger ones and three ones are actually not dragon, but a different type called mang, which literally means python, but it's still a mythological creature just one level down. And it's used for other aristocrat or important officials. But that didn't really got consolidated until Ming Dynasty. So so coming back to the white dragon we see in this game playing video, if you pay attention, its front legs have five claws, its back legs have four claws. It may just be an aesthetic choice made by the designer. I'll still call it a dragon because it does have five claws <laughs> of its front legs. But what is this dragon? Well, this is the dragon form of that statue earlier. Kang Jinglong, one Caramba. of the deities who represents the east quadrum of the ecliptic. Kangxiu, the Kang constellation. Jin means meadow. Jin mu shui huo tu. Meadow, wood, water, fire, earth. In traditional culture, these five elements are represented by five different colors. The one coordinates with meadow is white, which is why people think this definitely is Kang Jinglong, a character in Journey to the West. Long means dragon. And if you look carefully, you'll see a horn 
on the top of the head of this dragon, a Very single nice. one, which is also a defining feature of this character, Kang Jinlong, in Journey to the West. The interesting thing about this character is, in the book, he is on the side of Sun Wukong. In the game plane, you see they're actually fighting against each other. Well, that is one part of the mystery of what is really the story of Black Myth Wukong. Caramba, After this epic véi. fight, they fall into the water o and the narrator's voice come back. He's talking again, very annoying. He says, at the conference or meeting of Ulambana, Buddha said these things. First, what is Ulambana? It's a very important festival in Buddhism, but also in traditional Chinese culture. It happens on the 15th day of the 7th lunar month, which only took place about two weeks ago. And it is the traditional Chinese ghost festival. Supposedly, on the night, the gate of the ghost world will open. All the ghosts who could not travel to our human realm can just that one night. And a lot of ceremonies will take place on the day to peace the ghosts and also pay respect to ancestors. And also not a good night to go out alone, middle of the night, for obvious reasons. But in Buddhism, this is also a very, very important day. It is often a day that huge ceremonies are held in temples to help trapped ghosts, hungry ghosts, to be fed, to be appeased, and to be able to travel to their next stage of reincarnation. Yulanpenjie in Chinese. During that conference, Buddha has taught everybody about five important things. The five, you can translate that as commandments or precepts or rules. It is the basic five type of things you are not allowed to do if you want to become a proper Buddhist. Meaning, no killing, no stealing no misconduct in sexual behaviors, including many different types of misconducts, no wrong speech, including lying, including gossiping, including instigating fight between people. The final one is no drinking of alcohol. I guess in ancient time, there weren't that many intoxication stuff laying around, so wine is picked out as the one representing that. In contemporary life, it gets extended to not using addictive drugs and substance. But this narrator, he starts to attack each rule, such as if there is no killing, then the hatred in this world will never end. Such as if you cannot drink, mm. then the emotional upheavals will never get appeased. Now you can tell this narrator is not a good person. Yeah. This is the anti-Buddha mm. almost type See. of pro. Also within this grand speech of this character, you hear three more rules that he attacked. These are not really standard rules from Buddhism. I'm guessing this is the game developers copywriting adding their own extra lines in this speech. This video is already getting very, very long. Thank you for your patience. We're gonna run through two or three more points and that will be the end of it. At the time code, minute 10, 30 second, the shot goes into an Nossa, interior que lugar que isso aí, mano? magnificent wall of a temple and the things are moving and talking to each other. Yeah. And this is very likely, pretty much 99%, to be Xiao Lei Yin Si. Little lay in temple in the story Journey to the West. Supposedly, the Buddha is living in lay in si, thunder sound temple, but this one is xiao lay in si, little thunder sound temple. So it's not the real one, it is a copycat one. In the book, it goes that there is a temple that is called Xiao Lei Yin Si that our traveling pack arrived at. <clears throat> the Shifu and monk, being who he is, believed it must be the temple where Buddha resides and they finally reach their destiny. Wukong was like, mm, no, it smells fishy. And the monk insisted, even if it's not the uh, temple that we're looking for still, it's a temple, so it must have Buddha statue in it. We have to go and pay respect. And very soon the pack will find out and the monk is correct. It is not a good place to go. The monkey king encounters a very difficult enemy called Huang Mei, yellow brow. And he has a very strong weapon that we'll talk about at the 
last bit of this video that managed to trap Sun Wukong in it and Sun Wukong couldn't get out. In that part of the plot in the book, there are multiple fights and battles happened between the monkey and the bad guy, and the monkey lost. Eventually, they only got saved because outside help came in. And this yellow brow bad guy, can you guess <laughs> who he is and know where he comes from and who is his backing? In the most ironic way, this is actually a servant boy of the future Buddha, Maitreya. Bodhisattva slash Buddha, the big belly, smiling the monk, uh -huh. yellow brow, escaped from his duty, got down to human realm, took away a couple of very strong magical weapons and stuff, and decided, I'm just gonna be the king of this mountain. And this is a very classic kind of thing that happens over and over and over in the story of Journey to the West. A lot of powerful creatures who are actually servants to bigger bosses Side decided to escape at their <clears throat> duty and wreak havoc in the human realm. If you think about how that may be related to a type of political satire to the human politics and power structure, <coughs> depending on from which angle you read the story, there are a lot of things to dig out of it. So in the book itself, eventually nobody can defeat this yellow brow, they have to go and grab Maitreya Buddha, who is the owner of this misbehaving servant. Sometimes certain enemies are just impossible to defeat. You just have to find the power behind it, who backs it up, and then that person can just take care of it in the snap of fingers. Isn't that interesting? So among the talking figures on that beautiful wall carving, you see this yellow row big belly but looking very angry and not laughing character turns around and said that is the clue that made everybody decided this definitely is the part of the yellow brow plot because it says since you've seen future why don't you bow down to me future means the future Buddha. So this yellow robed person says he himself is the Maitreya Buddha of the future. This probably 99% is the yellow bro who just shape shifted himself into his owner Buddha. One thing I want to point out is looking at a grand carving. É bem confuso, né, cara? É muita coisa, velho, para absorver. Mas legal que agora vendo toda a cena, a gente tem um panorama diferente, né? on the wall, it's also based on real things in China. It's likely to be a mixture of two different temples existing in two different locations. One is also in the province of Shanxi called Xixian Xiao Xitian. Xixian is the county's name. Xiao Xitian is Little West Heaven. And this temple contains some hanging carvings. It was made during Ming Dynasty. The other temple is located in Xi'an. Lantian, Shui Luan. Lantian is the place name and Shui Luan is the temple's name. Within this temple, you can also see this kind of hanging over structure of thousands of Nossa, Buddhist carvings. Isso, I think the number is around 3,700 wow. individual carvings. And this temple is even older. It started in Tang Dynasty. Afterwards, during different dynasties, it got rebuilt over and over again. At the very end of the game playing video, you see a snowy mountain, a huge mountain metal thing and é, the camera isso? is close to it and slowly Bernardi. pulling away. This is likely to be the Jin Nao, the weapon of Yellow Brow. It is the weapon that he used to trap Sun Wukong and Sun Wukong couldn't break out. And the Kang Jin Long, the white dragon in the game version, used its horn to jam into it to open a crack so that the monkey can come out. And you can hear this knocking sound of the meadow. So it's probably suggesting the monkey is Kong inside tá lá. of that. Now, similar to Western music instrument, the cymbal, two pieces of metal dish hitting together and making a beat. And as it fades out, you see the characters show up. Fighting off the difficult challenges and we start our journey again. This is a line coming from the ending song from the 1980s television series of Aqui Journey to West. And ah the most classic line from this song is asking where is the path? The path is underneath your feet. is one of the line in the middle of this song. And I think this comes from Game Sciences very genuine <laughs> expression of how many difficulties they have already come across and they will come across in the future to keep developing this game. Mas detalhe, até agora nós não vimos os companheiros né, do Kong no jogo. 
Então eu continuo achando que é a mesma jornada, só que feita de novo apenas pelo Sun Wukong. Não é a história original. Ah, Kalil, mas os desenvolvedores já contaram que é uma história que acontece depois. Sim, depois. Só que refazendo ela, entendeu? A história, a jornada, ela já acabou, a original, mas por algum motivo o Sun Wukong teve que voltar no tempo, talvez, e refazer a sua jornada, agora sozinho. Não sei, mano. Tá muito louco isso aí. In the year past, a lot of things have happened. For example, <laughs> Tencent still managed to stick its hands into this business and got 5% of its share. This game developing team, they've also done some controversial thing on Chinese internet, such as um, they send out these announcements looking for game developers to join the team, but they are all written in extremely <laughs> inflammatory languages that got really bashed by the internet. Realistically, don't look forward to it before 2023. In that case, we're likely to see another trailer a year from now, 2022, August or September. É, aqui ela, aqui ela termina, né? Deixa eu colocar para vocês o trailer agora original, né? Do qual ela comentou aqui. Que é o trailer de 2001, né? Mas agora a gente já tem uma visão diferente. Olha a Buda de mil mãos lá. As estátuas lá. E ele disfarçado em uma. macaco de bunda vermelha. Só que aqui tá representado de forma diferente, né? Bom, eu não vou prendê-los aqui, tá? Todo mundo já viu esse trailer mais de mil vezes. Mas por fim, deixa eu só mostrar pra vocês daquela série que eu comentei lá de 1986, o ano que eu nasci e que eu tô assistindo agora e tô adorando, mano. Ó, oh, pessoal, é esse canal aqui, ó, China Zone English, tá? Basta vocês procurar por eles, entrar aqui em playlist, e aqui em playlist, vocês vão descendo, ó, aí você tem bem aqui no cantinho, ó, Journey to the West, tá vendo aqui embaixo? Quando você clicar aqui, aí ele vai abrir pra você a playlist de toda a, a série. Obviamente, eu não vou passar ela aqui, se não dá direitos autorais, né? Mas assistam! Que é bem legal, é bem bacana. 
Pessoal, eu fico por aqui. Agradeço vocês que acompanharam, tá? Realmente, essa mina é incrível, cara. Ela explica muita coisa, né? Que a gente não conhece aqui no, no Ocidente e tal. E por ela ser chinesa, presumo eu, né? Ela falou que a cidade natal dela é lá, então sim. Ela tem muita bagagem e pra poder falar... E isso eu acho muito legal, porque agora a gente vendo esses trailers e quando jogar, passar por esses lugares, vamos entender melhor, né? Existem alguns rumores de pessoas que jogaram o game e que não entenderam muito bem da história e tal e pá, provavelmente por não estarem familiarizado à mitologia chinesa e ou a história Journey to the West. Então eu acho que por esses dias, o máximo de conteúdo que a gente puder consumir dessa história vai nos preparar melhor para entender o que vai rolar lá, entender os plots e não ficar perdido, né? Só no bate, bate, bate e gameplay. Eu acho que a lore é muito importante e vale a pena dar uma olhada. Galera, eu fico por aqui. A tarde tem mais vídeo. Obrigado, tamo junto, é nóis. Valeu!